Are you listening to the Harry George and the Usual Suspects show right here on BikerRadioStation.com? I'm going to tell you what, man. Every once in a while, I know of myself goes, you know, you get out there on the road and you're going somewhere and you suddenly realize, like, where the hell am I at? You know, uh, that means you got pulled a bike over on the side of the street and you got to drag out the, you know, open up the backpack or whatever you're running with, your, you know, wherever you got in the saddlebag or whatever. Find the damn atlas and everything. Start trying to figure out where the hell you are in the state you're in. <clears throat> and I mean, it just gets like, wow. Well, man, we got a guy on the phone today that said, nah, you don't got to do that stuff no more. Not only am I going to be able to show you who, what, when, where you're at. I'm going to tell you about some great places to party and all kinds of things like that. Man, put together a little thing called the the Biker Atlas, man. Rob Borden. Hey, Rob, how you doing? I'm doing good, buddy. How are you, man? (laughs) I'm lost in my own studio on a regular basis, Rob. I mean, I could definitely use any kind of help you can give me. Cool. I can't hear you too good, man. So I'm I'm trying to make out best I can what you're saying. Okay, let's try that. How's that? A little bit better for you? Um, not really, but we'll, we'll play it by ear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got to get, I got to get, uh, we, we've been having a couple of little bit of issues with the board today, so we'll try to turn it up a little bit more. I just don't want to fuzz you out to the point where you can't understand anything I'm saying. You understand? Nope. Guess yeah, it. well, I, I'm coming to it a little bit, so what's going on with you guys, man? So tell me, Rob, when did you decide to come up with this idea? I mean, this thing sounds pretty wicked cool, and it seems to have a whole lot of interesting little side features. Yeah, man, it's got all kinds of stuff. I mean, basically, the way the idea came up is um, I went on a trip. I went up to uh, the Blue Ridge Parkway and uh, did um, Skyline Drive, Tale of the Dragon, and all that. And um, I got up there, and what a lot of people don't realize, Blue Ridge Parkway is fucking beautiful, man. Um, 469 miles long, but a lot of people don't realize it's actually a state park. So what that means is there ain't no signs anywhere that tell you where there's gas and food. So once you get down under about a quarter tank of gas, you you, you start getting nervous because you had no idea where there's gas. So I was on this trip, and I said, you know, it'd be nice if there was an app or something that showed you, like, you know, where the gas stations were nearby or where the, you know, food or whatever was. And I didn't think much more about it. And then uh, a little bit later on down the line, I took another trip. Me and some buddies uh, went up the East Coast from uh, Florida up into uh, North Carolina. And we stopped in in uh, Myrtle Beach, which happened to be Myrtle Beach Bike Week along the way. And um, so we threw all our crap in the hotel and get out on the bikes. And we come out and we're sitting right there on the main, main drag there at Myrtle Beach in the middle of Myrtle Beach Bike Week. And I didn't see not one single bike. And I'm like, what the hell? This is Myrtle Beach Bike Week and there ain't no bikes anywhere? And so then I thought to myself, you know, it'd be nice if there was an app or something that showed you where the biker spots were when you're traveling in unfamiliar territory. And then that just kind of, you know, paired up with the Blue Ridge Parkway trip. And so it just kind of started growing this idea in my head. So I came back home, I started looking online, looking at the apps, you know, that were available for motorcycle riders, and aside from, you know, motorcycle video games, basically, there really wasn't a whole lot out there for bikers, Um, and and certainly nothing about, like, what I had in mind. So I said, well, screw it, I'll just make my own. So that's what I did, man. So I did a couple years of research and development, and if you notice, actually, the app has a separate section in it on the Blue Ridge Parkway just for the gas and food exits because of that trip. So that's why that's in there. Um, so anyway, yeah, did a couple of years, like I said, research development and uh, started putting the app together and, you know, then uh, submitted it to Apple and Android. They both picked it up and, uh, I mean, it just, it took off from there. I mean, played around with the price of the app a little bit. You know, started off uh, one price and then tried another price and, Ended up settling in at a dollar ninety nine uh, for the app, and then all these sponsorship requests started coming in. All these companies that wanted to be a part of what we were doing, and uh, because of that, uh, about two months ago, I actually made the app free. Now, one thing with with uh, free apps, they always bombard you with all these pop ups and trying to sell you all this bullshit. 
And uh, that's something that we don't do with Biker Atlas, man. It's a 100% free app with no pop-ups or no nothing. So, yeah, basically that's how I got started. That's, I mean, I got to tell you what, that's, you know, that's the great American ideal. You know, you're sitting there and you see a need and you go looking for it and nobody's got it. And, you know, okay, well, then if nobody's got it, I need to figure out how to get it or get it done or get it together and go from there. I mean, I'm writing and I mean, are you uh, computer trained to like be able to put the app together? Or you called on a friend of yours or, you know, how'd you get all worked out with uh, actually putting the language together to make it work right? Well, that's why it took two years to research and development because <laughs> I didn't know what the hell I was doing. <laughs> I can put oil on so, uh, my bike, but I don't know how to turn on the computer. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I've I've messed around with websites and stuff before, but you know, never done any apps, and they're completely different. And so, uh, I mean, it was just trial and error. And you know, when I first started off, it was under a different name, and I had uh, ran into a legal issue with this other name, so. Then we switched it over to this, and it's, you know, every so often we add more content and more features, and, you know, people will write into us or send us messages, you know, hey, you know, it'd be nice if you had this feature or that feature, and, you know, if it's feasible and if it's something that, that we feel like is a benefit to the app, then, uh, you know, we, we certainly add it. So that's the one nice thing with the app is, you know, it's always changing. It's always got new stuff, so... You know, you look at it now, you, you see one thing on there. You look at it, you know, six, eight months down the road, now all of a sudden it's got three or four more features in it. So it's constantly changing, you know. So, I mean, you know, when you go to update something like that and everything, you know, go version 1.1 or 1.2 or whatever you do, I mean, you know, the, especially with, you know, the languages and how quickly they are, you know, evolving and getting faster and a little bit, you know, more and more easy to be used. Do you uh, find yourself, you know, uh, suddenly deciding, okay, I'm just going to put like redo the whole thing in this newest version, or do you just like tack on, you know, tack some stuff on the the versions that you have and just let it uh, re-roll and reconstitute itself, or how are we doing that? Well, I got to tell you, I had an airplane flying overhead here when you were just talking, saying that, so I didn't quite catch what you said, uh, but something about the updating the apps. So when we update the apps, typically speaking. Uh, we're adding content. Very rarely is there an update. Matter of fact, I can't remember anything uh, that we've ever actually ever taken out of the app. Um, so, yeah, I mean, each time there's an update, it's because there's stuff added. Again, I didn't completely hear what you said, so I don't know if I answered your question or not. But no, no, that's all. Uh, well, you know, like I said, you know, most people that they start out, you know, I, I've learned a lot. I've, I have the basic language skills to write this. And I put together this version and it's working and people are buying it, you know, people are buying it or downloading it or whatever. But, you know, like everything else in the world of computers, languages evolve just as, as phones evolve, as, uh, you know, you know, computers evolve. So, like, do you have, like, you know, time comes around when you're going to have to, like, go ahead and reboot this whole thing into, like, a version 2 or a version 3? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, yeah, because, you know, Apple, their, their iOS, uh, changes and, uh, same thing with Android, you know, as they release their new versions of their phone software, a lot of times we'll have to, uh, release a new update of the app just to be compatible with the new phone software. So then it gets to a point sometimes, we've only seen it happen a couple of times, where there's this one old guy that's kept on, you know, that same phone that he's had for 10 years and the app doesn't work on it anymore. Well, it worked on it when he, you know, when he had it originally, but with all the software updates, you know, apps can can not work anymore. So, yeah, sometimes you run into stuff like that. Well, but, yes, we, we always do keep the app current with all the uh, current operating systems. Cool. Now, like, if I wanted to go, let's say, okay, I got your Biker Atlas app, and I wanted to go to, say, like, Sturgis or someplace like that, and just know more about that particular area does the, you know like you said you know because you had done the thing with the state park or that big national park down there on the parkway and everything you got uh, specific sections of it where you could say okay you're at this event and this is where you could find everything yeah our app um there's a it's got a it's got a nationwide calendar of events for all the motorcycle rallies across the country 
got all the helmet laws for every state in the country, all the gun laws for every state. Uh, it's got an interactive GPS guided map. You can zoom it in, zoom it out as far as you want, and it'll show you preloaded points of interest in the map. Uh, it's got biker bars, campgrounds, strip clubs, repair shops, whatever your typical biker looks for. Now, it's not going to have every biker bar and every campground. I mean, all over the country, there's no way to enter that much data in your phone unless you want me to turn turn your phone into a fishing weight. So, um, but it does have pre-selected points of interest in there that we've either run across in our own travels, uh, any of our crew, or that have been, you know, handed down to us or recommended to us. Or there's even a section in the app where you can submit your own spots. So if you've got a favorite spot somewhere that you know about that you think should be in the app, you can submit it to us right there from the app. We'll add it in there. Um, so you open up the map. You find a spot on there that you want to go to. You just tap on it, and they give you GPS guidance right to the front door, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, now, no, the no. app also has a section where it's broken down by state. So, um, you know, if you're going through a particular state or planning on a trip through a particular state, you can go to that state's page. And on that page, it'll have the helmet laws for that state. And it'll have a few really nice scenic rides. It's not going to have every one of the most, you know, beautiful motorcycle roads in the state. Again, you know, that, that amount of data would just crash your phone. Um, but it's going to give you a pretty good overview of what's going on in the state, uh, which is pretty cool. In fact, that's the only complaint that we've ever gotten about the app. Everybody raves about the app. I mean, it's the, the number one app on the market. It's in 61 countries all over the world. Uh, right now, the only complaint that I've ever gotten about the app um, is people will say, oh, well, you don't have anything in, in this particular spot or in that particular spot. Uh, like last week, I had a lady email me. She said, oh, you don't have anything in Sandusky, Ohio. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. You know, I mean, I probably don't have anything in Paducah, Kentucky either. And, you know, I mean, I'm not comparing Sandusky with Paducah, Kentucky, but yeah, I mean, that's the only complaint that, that we'll get sometimes. You don't have anything in this spot or that spot. And again, my, my answer to that is if I were to put every single biker bar and every campground and every strip club and every repair shop all over the country into your phone, your phone would be useless. And then you'd hate me. Now, you could use it for, well, you could at least use it for a paperweight then. But I know why the lady asked about Sandusky, though, man, because like last week, uh, you know, for 10 days, they had the big Ohio Bike Week rally up that direction. And it's kind of based out right, of the Sandus right. it's based out of the Sandusky area. Uh, Kelly and myself were actually sure. up there, so yeah. Yeah, no, I'm you know, I'm well aware that they had this the Ohio bike week out there and uh, you know, I mean the only really prerequisite that we have um to for us to put your location on the map in the biker atlas is it's gotta be a permanent spot. I mean, uh, like, you know, um, a lot of these temporary vendors, they'll go out and they'll set up these really nice venues, you know, for Ohio Bike Week or for Laughlin or for, you know, Hollister, whatever the case may be, but it's just a temporary setting. Well, you know, there's no way that we can go in and put in every single temporary uh, Bike Week setup all over the country and, you know, then go back in and take it down a week later. You know, oh, so absolutely. As long understand. As, yeah, as long as it's a permanent spot and you know, and, and it's a you know biker friendly and it's it's a good spot. I mean, hit that submission button on the app. Submit it to us. We'll throw it on there. Absolutely cool, man. And uh, I, you know, I heard you mention, and I'm I'm kind of curious about this one myself. Uh, you had mentioned, you know, that you're you're in a whole bunch of different other countries. So you also have the ability to say, if I'm in England. Or uh, you know Russia or someplace like that, and I want to know where there's a biker-friendly spot. I can this atlas is going to get me there. Uh, well, again, I didn't quite understand what you said, and I got another freaking plane flying over my head here. But um, I, I think I understood you. Um, the only app we have is Biker Atlas, and it's just for the U.S. When I say we're in 61 countries, I mean we. We have users that have downloaded our app in 61 countries all over the world. Um, the number of downloads, I, I couldn't even venture to guess at this point. I mean, once you reach a certain point, you just kind of don't even worry about it anymore. Um, but we did, when we very first started off, we had Biker Atlas Canada, and we had Biker Atlas UK as well. 
And as hard as we tried to get those to work, they just didn't. Because there's just not a whole lot of, of information easily available um, for rallies and things like that in Canada and the U.K. as there is for the U.S. And so we actually took down Biker Atlas Canada and Biker Atlas U.K. Oh, okay. And living close to an airport can definitely be detrimental to a phone conversation. I'm understanding that. So, but uh, now you know, you, you have you know. So one of the, the although I got to tell you, you know, you say you got you know kind of like 61 countries who've got who've downloaded this thing. That sign kind of speaks kind of well, you know, because it says there's a whole bunch of people from a whole bunch of different places coming here and downloading your app so that they can have the absolute best experience on their motorcycle rented or sent over or however and enjoy themselves. I mean, that's a damn dude. That's amazingly cool. Oh, it's awesome, man. We get letters and emails and stuff from people all the time, you know, thanking us because they flew in from, you know, England or they flew in from Brazil or they flew in from wherever, rented a bike and, did a tour and they used our app along the way and they found all these awesome places. And I mean, it's the biggest compliment we can get, you know, I mean, it, it's really awesome. Um, you know, and, uh, I want to say it's probably been about a year and a half, two years ago now, got an email from uh, a few guys from Brazil that were flying and, and, um, they had downloaded our app and they were flying into Vegas and they wanted to do route 66. And uh, it just so happens my wife is Brazilian. She speaks Portuguese, so I speak fluent Portuguese. So I surprised the shit out of these guys. I met them at the airport with the bikes, and we did Route 66 with them. Cool. We took pictures. Of, yeah, we took pictures along the way, and it was a blast, man. Now that you know, as a, as a developer with a, and having an opportunity to do something like that, I mean, you can't put a price on an experience like that. You saw a need to create something, you created it. You uh, you know, it got you know very popular to the point where it's like you say now you can download this thing for free without all those extras on it to come with a lot of free apps. But not only that, you have an opportunity to interact with your users. In such a manner as you just said, that's an amazing piece of business, man. And, you know, I think that's what's been, you know, at least partially instrumental to the success is, you know, from day one when I created this thing, it never was about me. You know, it never was about biker habits. Well, it was about giving back to the motorcycle community, you know, giving them something that there was a need for. And so throughout my whole promotion and marketing and branding of the biker atlas, I've never branded Biker Atlas. I've never marketed Biker Atlas uh, anywhere near as much as I promote what other people are doing. So I found that by promoting you guys, by promoting the biker community, by promoting the biker businesses, the charities, all the good that the, the biker community does, you know, by promoting all of that, people find out about us a whole lot more than if I'm just out there standing on the corner with a, you know, Biker Atlas sign. So... That, that's uh, I feel like that's been very instrumental to our success is that it never was about me and it never was about biker atlas it's about the biker community well that's, I mean you know it's karma man good karma gets you good karma bad karma gets you bad karma you put something together yeah. you know and you liked it and you gave it to people and you shared it with them and and you told them you know this you know, this, you know, this where the part you know these are where the parties are at this is the places that you want to stop and see. They had a good time and spread the word. That's as good as, I mean, honestly, you can't add word of mouth advertising, you know, the, down here in the, down here in the ditches with the guys who use the application where they're saying it's as good as it is. And honest to God, man, I've heard a lot of fantastic things about this from my brothers with the smartphones, even like myself, you know, and they're, they're all say, they all say the same thing. You will not download. You can't find, there is not available a better, more concise piece of software for your phone than Biker Atlas. And, I mean, that's freaking great. That's awesome, man. I'm really glad to hear that. Thank you. You know, so. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, we, we couldn't do it without without the people that, you know, support us and without the people that sponsor us. I mean, we got such an amazing network of, of people that, that, you know, do what they can for us. I mean. You know, I mean, all the way from the East Coast. I've got a crew over on the East Coast, you know, Jody over there, 
uh, who handles all my East Coast stuff, and, you know, she's always out promoting us and promoting, you know, the people out there. But, I mean, you know, I mean, some of the people, just to name a few, I mean, we got Iron Horse Saloon, uh, Hang Dog Saloon, uh, Alan Sturgis, you know, Blanco Camp Campground, you know, they're one of our big sponsors. You know, Easy Rider, Broken Spoke. I mean, we're affiliated with some of the biggest names in the industry. You know, I personally, I live out in Vegas, so I'm, personally, I'm more in touch with stuff out here on the West Coast. And out here in Vegas, I mean, we got, you know, Indian Motorcycles, BMW Motorcycles, Freedom Cycle, Carter Power Sports, Major Power Sports, Hogs and Heifers Saloon, uh, Eagle Rider Motorcycles, Valhalla Cycles, uh, Harley Davidson Cafe. But I mean, my point is, we got everything from big name, you know, people that sponsor what we do and support we, what we do, down to small, you know, small mom and pop shops, you know, and I think the variety of, of the people that we have and, and that diversity of the people that we have that have our back, even down to the, you know, the local motorcycle clubs. I mean, you know, Eagle Riders 518 MC, I mean, they, they, they support everything we do. The Combat Vets Association, the Marine Riders, I mean, veterans are some of the biggest people here out here that support us, you know, and uh, so... It's just the support that we get is just amazing. It really is. And you know, you got to say honestly, you know, those that's as Americana cool as it can get. You know, I'm I'm out taking a ride on a road one day, and I see it, you know, and I'm like, I want to, you know, I'm looking look at my gas gauge, and I'm like, wow, I wish I, you know, had something on my phone that'd get me there. And then, you know, two three years later, you know, you got the biker atlas and everything. And that, I mean, that's just that's that's just great. I mean, because I mean, there's there's no adjective to describe how much that explains the basic American need to, you know, I'm going to help some people out and I'm going to help myself out too, you know, because I don't like being lost. I don't want to run out of gas, and you know, my feelings got to be the same as everybody else's. They don't want to do it either, so let me help them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's and and that's. That's basically what it is, man. I mean, you know, uh, that's how it all came together. And so, like I said, we we couldn't do it without the support that we have from the from the riders and 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 then from the you know people in the motorcycle industry. So, you know, we owe it all to uh, all to you guys, man. And I don't know if you saw my post on Facebook. This is actually the first radio interview that I've ever agreed to. You know, I mean, it's not that I I've been against them. I just don't ever have the time, man. I stay so busy running around. So, uh, you know, I'm glad you guys uh, got a hold of me. I'm glad we could work this out. Oh, as are we. You know, when Kelly, when Kelly had told me, you're not going to believe who I got hooked up for you. And I'm like, that dude don't talk to nobody, man. And it's not to say that you, it's not that you don't want to talk to him. But like you say, man, I'm trying to make sure that, you know, the people out that I'm making something for things. So to, to have you here on our show, your inaugural radio interview as it were is like amazingly wicked cool and i'm gonna tell you what i really appreciate it now your uh your app it's available at uh at the usual outlets you know for your phones is that correct yep yeah it's available in itunes and uh and also google play for your android phones just uh go to the app store type in biker atlas and uh it'll come up or you can find us online at bikeratlas.com or you can find us on uh, YouTube or, I mean, wherever. Speaking of YouTube, we've actually started a line of videos that we call Biker Atlas TV. And that's a lot of the uh, events that we go to at rides and charity events and things like that. Uh, we started doing videos, and we call those segments Biker Atlas TV. Well, then the next thing I know, we're in talks with Roku, which is a smart TV box, kind of like Apple TV, if you've heard of that. Uh, Roku is the second largest smart TV box in the world. They've got over 10 million subscribers. We're in the process of developing Biker Atlas TV channel for Roku, where uh, where all these videos, um, we'll actually do a more TV-friendly format for them, but uh, we'll have a Biker Atlas t streaming TV station on uh, Roku here before too long. So you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna end up being like the NBC or the biker world. Is that where you're heading, man? I guess, man, if you could actually, if you could possibly stretch me any thinner than I'm already stretched. I don't know how I'm so stretched so thin, but I'm still such a fat ass. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, though, man. It, you know, it, you can say what you will about that, about how, you know, this, but, you, you know, one can see, you know, you're thinking on it, you're evolving with it, 
you know, the, you know, the ability to like, okay, I got some, you know, I'm going to be at the house and, uh, I'm going to take it on my Roku. I, you know, I'm thinking about going for a ride this weekend. Let me dial in the biker TV and see what, you know, what, what's happening, whatever. Then I can load it in, you know, load up my biker Atlas and it'll show me how to get it over there. That's as multimedia as you could possibly get short of taking somebody sitting on the back of their bike and telling them where they're going. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, for the time being, man, find our videos on YouTube. Just go to our biker Atlas uh, TV channel there on YouTube and, uh, see a lot of videos there a lot of the stuff that we do and that we put together and uh yeah biker atlas i mean we're always growing in a million different directions man we started offering uh free biker event promotional services free web hosting for biker event um, web pages uh free web page design for a lot of the smaller events out there that maybe don't have the budget to pay somebody to build them a website and pay for hosting we do all that for you for free um, so, I mean, it, it's just, you know, our way of giving back to the biker community. And, uh, you know, it, it, again, it's just a hundred different directions that Biker Atlas is, is growing in. So it all started with the app and that kind of snowballed from there, man. But, uh, yeah, absolutely look for bigger and better things, man. Hey, right, that's fantastic. Rob, man, I want to thank you first and foremost, like I said, for allowing us to be the very first, uh, program you've ever done an interview on. But I mean, you could, you know, we couldn't, and we couldn't have asked for a better one, man. Because I mean, what more, you know, when you're when you're riding or whatever, you know, that's the thing. It's the desk, it's the ride. It's not always the destination, you know. And it's knowing, you know, the little side places, and you're somewhere, and like, okay, where do I want to go stop and have a good time while I'm ha- while I'm hanging out here? You saw a need, you know, a basic need. You expanded on that basic need. And the motorcycle world is, to be bluntly truthful, better for that need for you seeing that, having that vision, man. So we truly appreciate you. I know I do. I got you on my phone. Yeah, we, so. just, we just shot a commercial up in uh, Red Rock Canyon, which is just uh, outside of the Las Vegas Strip, about 30 miles. And, uh, you know, I just kind of put it out there. I thought maybe two or three people might agree to, to come meet and help me film it. Next thing I knew, I had about 50 people all wanting to come, and I couldn't fit them all in, so I had to narrow it down to, I think it was eight people by the time all was said and done. Uh, but the script of this commercial, and we'll send you guys a link to the commercial once I finish editing it, uh, so you guys can do whatever you want with it. But um, the script to the commercial says pretty much everything there is to say about, about, about Biker Atlas. The script says, um, in everything we do, we believe in the power of freedom freedom of speech, freedom of choice, and the freedom of the open road. We don't believe that when you ride, you need books, maps, or guides. But when you want them, they should all fit in the palm of your hand. And that's that, that's Biker Atlas, man. We don't think that, you know, bikers need books and maps and all this bullshit. When you go for a ride, you need a bike and you need to win. That's it. But when you want those things, they should all fit in the palm of your hand. And that's what Biker Atlas does, man. So we got that commercial shot. We had... Uh, Let's see, we had Sandy Kelly Smith, we had Nanny Six, who's actually listening to you guys right now, uh, Bob Hope, we had um, Chris, we had Nancy, we had Carla, I mean, I just want to thank all these guys for coming out, you know, and, and supporting what we do, they were, you know, they're fans of ours, and they just, they came out to, to do what we do, just, just to help out, man, and help the cause, and I really appreciate that. I, I'm going to tell you straight up, and I really and we appreciate you being here on the Harry George and the Usual Suspect Show. So, people, man, if you got your scooter and you haven't evolved yet, you know, you've know, got your smartphone and everything, and you're still kind of wondering what's what one of those, you know, you know, everybody tells you, well, you got to download Gas Buddy, you got to download this or download that. Man, if you're riding two wheels and you don't got Bike or Atlas on your phone, you're missing out on one of the greatest apps that ever came down the road for a two-wheel riding community, and that's a fact. Rob, man, thank you so much for being with us, brother. Thank you, guys, man. And uh, anytime, give me a buzz, man. I'd love to check in with you guys. Absolutely. We truly appreciate it. Hey, you're listening to the Harry George and the Usual Suspect Show right here on BikerRadioStation.com. 